South Central Update, brought to you by TaylorMade. Hey everyone, happy Easter, happy Passover, and happy what would have been Master's Sunday. We hope you and your loved ones are as safe and healthy as possible at home. Believe it or not, only a year ago, Tiger Woods earned his 15th major. It was his first win in a major without having the 54 hole lead. And while it's impossible to reproduce the drive down Magnolia Lane, Tiger Woods showed the spirit of Augusta National today, giving his very own version of one of the most picturesque places in all of golf. Tiger has wowed so many of us time and time again, including Super Bowl champ and future Hall of Famer Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers, who reflected on last year's Masters on the 411 podcast. It was totally historic it was incredible especially with the kind of injury that he had you know uh then you know he wins he wins the u.s open with a torn acl i mean that's incredible enough then the back problems um for years and the surgeries and the images we saw and the and the with and the wds you know that he had and you're just thinking are we ever going to see that tiger again um the excitement i think started to build uh, when he won the tour championship and everybody thought this is basically a major you have the 30 best players at that time playing in a tournament and he beat them um, so special so I think there was the energy was starting to build and for golf fans uh, you know and for fans of the underdog and the comeback story although Tiger's never really been an underdog but just the fact <laughs> of knowing what he went through to come back and win you know, one of the greatest one of the greatest stories in sports history. Last week, the PGA Tour and golf's governing bodies released the revised upcoming schedule. The Masters will move to November. August would hold the first major of the season, the PGA Championship in California. The FedEx Cup playoffs events all take place before the U.S. Open right outside of New York City. And the Ryder Cup would cop cap off a very compact schedule in golf. And Rory McIlroy, the number one player in the world, commented on the changes saying this, quote, I feel like there's anticipation going into Augusta, the first big event of the year. There's all of this hype. I don't think it'll feel like that this year. I think it'll feel a little bit different, which I'm looking forward to. It's going to be a different Masters, and personally, selfishly, maybe that's what I need to get the jacket. Of course, he's talking about completing the career Grand Slam. We welcome in Nota Begay the third. PGA Tour winner and longtime friend of Tiger Woods. And a lot of us just cannot wait for the Masters to actually be played in November. What are your thoughts on Tiger defending in the fall with cooler temperatures, a lot of golf and a little bit of time? And we've only really seen Tiger play five times total, including the President's Cup since August, skipping out on the players. Is this a good thing, maybe? Well, first and foremost, I, I have to give a lot of credit to the PGA Tour and the governing bodies of these championships for all the coordination and more, more importantly, the cooperation that it required to put together this um, aspirational schedule, I think, is what we're calling it in hopes that uh, we get through the crisis and we're able to level off um, some of, of the issues related to, to COVID-19. So if we are able to get back into a full golf swing, I'm really looking forward uh, to this schedule. I think it's going to provide a lot of opportunity for guys like Rory to play the Masters as the third or the final major of the year versus the first major of the year. And with regard to what it's going to do for Tiger Woods, I think it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Tiger can finish in the top 10 at Augusta basically in his sleep uh, if he's somewhat healthy just because he knows the golf course, how it plays in April. He knows every single uh, way that the golf course can play with wind conditions and turf conditions and whatnot. And it's going to be a slightly different setup. And so it could play a little bit longer. Typically, it's a little bit cooler, a little bit wetter in that time of year. And coolness and cold aren't great for a dodgy back uh, and neither is a slightly longer golf course tiger is no longer one of the most powerful players on the pga tour certainly has enough power to be dangerous uh week in week out but certainly not the dominant power that we saw him um take over the golf course in in, in 97 2001 and, and 02. so it's um i think a bit up in the air i think tiger would prefer to be in april but 
uh, November is going to give him uh, another sort of challenge. He's going to have to rely a lot on his experience, his course know-how, and uh, figure out to tactically take apart this. Right. It's almost going to level the playing field for guys who've seen Augusta National year after year and some of these uh, newcomers who have yet to see it and nobody will have ever seen it in November in competition mode, at least. A lot of people are watching the Masters Rewind, hearing Tiger explain in his own words what he was thinking out thinking about shot after shot in last year's final round. I remember you talking about how he played the course, given the circumstances, how many players were there to surround him, congratulate him after he got his 15th major. What made that day stand out from everything else we've ever seen in sports? Well, I think just the amount of focus that he had to hold up um, within himself throughout those final six or seven holes and the discipline that he played the course uh, in those closing holes. And it was never a foregone conclusion that Tiger was going to win. Maybe 10 years ago, yes, but last year, not so much. Uh, we've seen him come close quite a few times and hit a bad shot, missed a short putt. And it was just kind of one of those things to where, okay, can he hold on? Can he finish out? The, the final two or three holes. And I think the biggest indication, nerves were under control and his swing was where he wanted it to be was tee shot at the 16th. He the 16th, goes on to make the putt, and then just goes on to finish out the, the round like we expect Tiger Woods to finish out the round. And he just did a wonderful job of demonstrating his understanding of the golf course. But most importantly, which I think causes players to fail down the stretch at Augusta is understanding the moment. He knew where he was at at specific points on the golf course and who was sort of going to push uh, up that leaderboard and possibly provide a challenge. And um, I knew he had a target score in his mind and he, he got where he needed to be. And uh, it was a monumental achievement considering all the dark moments, all the doubt, all of the, uh, the, the questions around just am I ever going to be able to play golf again? Am I ever going to win again? And am I ever going to win a major? And he answered all those questions uh, in a little under a year and a half. So uh, typical Tiger. Yeah, typical Tiger. That 12th hole obviously stands out and that embrace with Charlie at the end. My gosh, you can't go back and look at it without getting teary eyed. Uh, switching gears here, I know that you're really hurting right now with what's happening with coronavirus around the world, but specifically how that's hitting the Navajo community, something that is so near and dear to your heart. What does the reality look like when it comes to the Navajo community and the coronavirus? Oh, well, it's not just the Navajo Nation uh, that's suffering at a high rate of incidence with re regard to the coronavirus. Uh, you know, one of the communities that I I grew up in, my mom's from, I still have a lot of family there. And in fact, over 75% of my family still lives on the reservations that are being impacted dr dramatically by uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, I've got family members that have contracted the, the disease and are being treated. And I don't know what, at what stage, it's hard to get reliable information. And it's just a very tough time for myself and for my family, I feel extremely helpless sitting at home in quarantine and wanting to get out there and help and, and try and, uh, you know, be a positive factor in, in pushing this thing back. But uh, in a nutshell, the, the healthcare infrastructure on Indian reservations just isn't equipped to handle something like this. And so when you, you see all of the different challenges that are facing this country with regard to accessing the appropriate uh, PPE for our doctors and our nurses on the front lines to coordinating uh, certain elements of the, the healthcare system to make sure that we get the people we need and we help the sick. And it's just a, a very hard situation. And um, at the MB3 Foundation, uh, at mb3f.org, uh, we've set up a COVID-19 response fund. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill in the cracks of where maybe some of the the proceeds or the, the money isn't hitting. We're, we're simply trying to get food and water to families that uh, are extremely poor and families that live in rural reservations. Over 80% of uh, the Native Americans that live on reservations do not have internet access. So that just kind of tells you how remote and inaccessible information is. And right now information is our biggest weapon in dealing 
uh, with the COVID-19 crisis. So doing the best I can. Um, had a lot of tremendous support from the Golf Channel and from a lot of colleagues in the world of sports. And I can't thank any, everybody enough for thinking of us and, you know, sending in your contributions and really being supportive of what's become um, a pretty disastrous situation in my homeland. Yeah, crazy how unpredictable this is. And I just feel terrible that you and so many others are going through that fear, that panic, and just wanting answers and not having them at the moment. Well, Noda, good work. Thank you for fighting the good fight and for coming on and talking with us. Well, it's good to be back talking about golf. I appreciate it, Chantel. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, if you want to learn more about Noda's story or any of the other stories surrounding golf right now, head to golfchannel.com for all of news updates and things to keep you entertained as we all stay at home. Thanks for tuning in. Golf Central Update, brought to you by TaylorMade.